to another meeting here at your bilingual space connected. My name is Fabiana Espinosa and I will be guiding you through today's journey from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I would like to remind you that you do not only see us through the Abby Ayala channel, but also you can follow us through Facebook, Twitter, and later on when the show is over on our channel on YouTube. will take us to the world of entrepreneurship and women. Women have owned and operated businesses for decades, but they were not always recognized or given credit for their efforts. Often, women entrepreneurs were invisible as they worked side by side with their husbands, and many only stepped into visible leadership positions when their husbands died. But a variety of factors have combined in recent years to contribute to the visibility and number of women who start their own businesses. Today, we have the pleasure to connect with Nadja Schroeder. She is a talented woman born and raised in Zurich that today resides in Miami, USA. Before we learn about Nadja's work and projects, let's meet her. Nadja Schroeder is a 39-year-old woman born and raised in Zurich, Switzerland. She is a partner at the Global Strategist at the Social Impact Creative Boutique Plus 305, located in Miami, Madrid, and Zurich. Her background is in intercultural communication. She speaks six languages, some better, some less well, and has lived in many different countries. She left the corporate world to be an entrepreneur after she had climbed the ladder all the way to Silicon Valley, where she worked for Apple on transcultural marketing projects. In June 2018, she started the Global Impact Women's Network Sisterhood Tribes, and she is a co-founder of the gratitude movement Not Self-Made. It is my pleasure today to introduce Nadja Schroeder. Nadja is talking to us all the way from Miami, US. And I cannot be more thankful for having her here today and for her taking the time to spend some uh, moments with us and telling us all about the amazing work that she does. Nadja, welcome to Connected. I am so happy to have you here today. Let's go ahead with the first question because I am very curious and I really want to hear about all the amazing work that you do. Nadja, you have uh, changed your life since you moved from Zurich in, um, in Europe to Miami in the US. Please tell us how was that experience for you in both levels, personal and professional? Okay, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm super happy to be here. Um, yeah, this question is kind of, you know, it's a big question, right? So changing your life from one continent to another has a lot of implications to it. Um, first of all, I was just excited because I love being abroad and I love being in other countries. But then I also realized how lonely it can be because I moved to a small desert town uh, in Arizona on the west coast of the US and I also realized how different people are you know like even though I speak English and the US seems so close because we're watching TV series from the US the whole time you still realize that cultures are really different um, but then in terms of business I found it to be a really amazing step especially because I just feel that the U.S. is so open to entrepreneurship and offers so many possibilities for someone who wants to start a business. And you get exposed to so many different cultures, ideas, and innovations here uh, that I, nice. I'm really feeling really grateful that I've been able to experience that. And I ended up staying. Uh, I moved to the West Coast. I'm now in Miami, but 
generally speaking, it's been a very good ride. Let's go ahead with the next one, which is um, you are an intercultural, intercultural communicator. So tell us about your, your experience um, taking that path, like when you decided to go for this career, and also how was the path itself? Where did you study and how was that experience for you? Yes, uh, it was kind of a natural decision for me to go into the intercultural field because I love languages and I, I was just so in love with other people having different worldviews and different ideas about the world. So I started traveling really early on, even though I didn't have much money, but I wouldn't mind just going low budget. And um, I was fascinated by the idea of helping cultures understand each other better because there there was and there still is so much misunderstandings like so many misunderstandings between cultures and um, I, was, I was really like interested in helping making the world a better place in this way you know and um, so yeah and, and for instance like the idea of racism it's so interesting because in your brain, you know, all of us are racist if you think about it, because how the brain works is that you have an experience, maybe it's a bad experience, and then your brain wants to warn you the next time. So say for instance, a white woman is gonna, you know, steal my purse then my brain is gonna constantly tell me, you know, watch out for white women who wanna steal your purse. So I think, I mean, what I have been finding really interesting is when you connect intercultural communication with awareness and consciousness and mindfulness, that then is when the next step happens, which is you understand the stereotypes in your brain, but then you decide to go against them. Or maybe not. I mean, maybe sometimes there is another white woman who wants to steal your purse and maybe you have to react, you know, but right. to be aware that these things are happening in our brain, I'm finding it just really interesting, you know? Yeah. Definitely. And especially what happens nowadays when we talk Middle East, even when we talk U.S. and the new government and the things that are happening also um, here in Mexico, South America, like it's all over. It's a it's a topic that is very sensitive. But like you said, we all have it for some reason. We might have had an experience or we read a, an article or we see the news. It's very difficult to maintain yourself away from that judgment right exactly because we've all been brainwashed in some ways right i mean and that's normal it's also how culture works you grow up with a certain idea about other people um so yeah it's just so important to be aware i think that's true i really think that both of your projects are um are genius because you know sometimes you have some ideas in your head but you don't hear people uh, talking about it. You don't see the news having anything with it. But when you read something like how I, when I read on your web, on your Facebook page that says, we all need a change of perspective about certain realities. Tell us about the project Not Self Made, please. Yeah, I'd love to. Actually, this is a project that I have co-created with my partner in life and business, Alberto Fein. He's a creative director. And we actually together have a, a social impact um, creative boutique here in Miami. And so we come up with ideas all the time. And one of our projects is this one. And he had the idea or he came up with the concept that, you know, in America especially, I don't know how it is so much in Bolivia, for instance. I do also mm -hmm. talk a lot about like self-made entrepreneur and self-made businesswoman or well, we also there is there are always this kind of professionals or you know self stock people that really believe that it's because of them and nobody else. Exactly. I mean, I guess with this kind of people, but they're everywhere. The concept exists everywhere, exactly. And since in the U.S. they usually call themselves self-made, and there are so many books. Uh, you know, with this title as well. He was like, you know what? We really need more humbleness and gratitude. And uh, so we were like, you know, this is such a cool idea. We have to start a movement. 
And it's interesting, you know, because when you start talking to people about the idea, some are so attached to the idea that they are self-made that they cannot let go. They're like, but I am, I really am. I'm like, I'm coming from nothing and I built an empire. And I agree with that. I mean, they probably put a lot of effort into what they have built, but at the same time, what we believe is that every step of the way you find help like sometimes it's even a smile an encouraging word of a mother or your father helping you with homework or maybe you didn't have parents but someone else helped you along the way and even like negative experiences can be helpful because if you look at them as something you can learn from you're going to grow from negative stuff then you know you start to realize it's not so much just about us right so yeah so on notself.com we have some t-shirts like statement t-shirts for anyone who wants to become a part of the movement and we hope it's going to spread a little more <laughs> right yeah. so basically what you guys are kind of reminding people that well mm, you may be successful now but it's because of your talent and the support of others yeah. correct that's basically like being thankful and like kind of practicing gratitude exactly that's exactly it and be a little bit more humble about your achievements you know right i mean every single meal my mom cooks for me you know like these little things that you forget you know right right and it makes the total difference so tell me right now you just uh, mentioned that you work with your partner so what tell me what are you currently working on today like how many things or projects or ideas are you working on I'm actually working on many different projects and um, mm -hmm. people used to tell me you have to focus on just one thing and I just couldn't do it I'm like I have so many ideas and I have to sometimes you know limit myself to a few projects that matter but I, I feel really happy with having a few projects at the same time so I guess the main project definitely is our social impact creative boutique where we do like communication services for brands and we work for like big brands like Real Madrid, uh, the soccer club and uh, Viacom, MTV and all of them and what we do is help them communicate uh, the good things that they're doing as a brand like for society or the environment and we help them communicate it in the right way so this is really a passion project but also it's it's our daily job and um, under this umbrella we've created a few different like social impact i would call them projects which um, not self-made is one of and sisterhood tribes is my main one that i'm so freaking passionate about <laughs> okay so let's go finally and talk about project sisterhood tribes it's happening right now in seven and 27 27 countries so tell us about the beginnings what are the goals and the results you have had so far yes thank you for asking this question it's such a passion project of mine that i'm so happy to share um I only started it actually last year, mid last year, and it came, it kind of was born out of the idea that, you know, I don't know, in the Middle East, for instance, I traveled a lot, I, I lived for a while in Turkey, and I spent a lot of time in Egypt, and I know that there are a lot of problems around women's topic in these countries, but something very beautiful that I have found there that nobody speaks about is that women have a very tight connection to each other and they pass down the wisdom from generation to generation still. And this is not only in the Middle East. I know that many other collective oriented societies are still doing that. But here in the West, I sometimes feel we get so isolated, you know, like women are by themselves with their children in an apartment. They don't have anyone helping them. Uh, entrepreneurial women like myself as well, like we, I don't know who to ask, you know, about how my next step could look like. I didn't grow up in an entrepreneurial family. So, um, and then I was like, you know, and also living abroad, uh, all my friends, my girlfriends are back home and um, yeah, and it takes time to make new friendships. But I always remember that, and that my yeah, my friends from back home and their age is like from 20 to 80, really, you know. Um, with them, I would always feel more myself. So I was like, you know, women have to stick together. They have to build things together. They have to support each other. And 
when I would talk to women, they tell me, oh, at my company, you know, we are competing so much with each other as women. And why is that? So I decided let's build a sisterhood, you know, let's build a sisterhood tribes. And obviously this is not a new idea. There are many other beautiful networks around the world. And, and you know, I'm in favor of all of them. Um, so that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, right. Because the more the better, really. Um, sure. And so I started to just put the word out about it. And in just, yeah, a little more than half a year, we, we have more than a thousand women from 27 countries, as you mentioned. And there are from countries like Cameroon and Azerbaijan that I've never been to in Central Asia and women who are really wanting to make an impact. This is now our new focus in the beginning was just for women in general. And now I decided, you know what? I want women who are really proactively trying to make a difference. And it can be in any way, you know, it doesn't have to be huge, like in the UN, right. you know, it can be in any way. If you're interested in making this world a better place, tell us about it. Like, and let's get inspired through the stories of others. And this is what I'm trying to do. Kind of like you, you know, <laughs> like you're sharing my story. I'm sh you know what you are telling me? And in my head, I'm like, oh, great. I'm going to be able to contact all of these women and ask them what they do and then interview them. And I am thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I would like to do one with you as well, you know. Yeah. and do a spotlight on you in our newsletter because you are another woman that's yeah. sharing inspirational stories and I just feel the more we connect the more powerful we are you know Yes, definitely. I also feel that way. And I love to hear it. So you started online and you started what? Contacting? Because like I said, um, you know, there are other younger people, younger generations that are listening to this. So very quickly, uh, tell us like a guide. Yeah. Okay, so most important rule for everyone listening right now is don't try to be perfect. You know, I'm a translator by profession, so I'm trying to write everything perfectly and I'm there. I all of a sudden realize if I do this every time, it's going to take me years to put out something. And also there are always going to be critics, you know, so don't worry about anything. If it's your passion, at some point it's going to work out. But there are also going to be a lot of moments when you're going to doubt your project. So just take a quick break and then just go right in again. Like, don't give up. Be persistent. Try to just put out there whatever you have to from the bottom of your heart. And then you see where it goes. And the second rule, and it's equally important, is to not think that you have to have it figured out at the beginning because you will not. The journey is going to take you somewhere that you would never expect. I mean, I didn't think a year ago that I would even have that and, and that it would go into the impact women you know, idea. And this just kind of slowly started to develop because of all the other things I'm doing in my life. And this is what's going to happen to you too. And just tell everyone about it because every feedback that you're getting is super valuable. And some people are going to tell you, you know, I don't understand what you're doing. I don't understand the value of this. And you get home and you're like, I don't understand it either. <laughs> but then maybe the next day someone else comes and is like, you know, this article that you wrote was really helping me. And I'm like, oh my God, it's worth, it's really worth it. Even if it's just impacting one person, you know? True. Yeah. Sorry, that was long. <laughs> No, not at all. I love to hear it because it is true. Along the way, sometimes the the one word you need to hear comes from, you know, can be your mom or can be a completely stranger that you just start walking, exactly. talking to on a bar or on the street. Uh, Nadja, we're gonna go to a fast cup. We'll be right back. People at home, remain connected. We'll be right back with more Connect. Stay tuned. Welcome back and thank you for remaining connected. Nadja, I have so many questions, but I'm gonna try to like focus on, on my questionnaire. Well, you were say, so first you started with the sisterhood and you made a, a website and you put all your articles there. How did you make, how did women contact you? How did that happen? So the articles was the second step. I first, I just made a website where where women could kind of sign up as a member and even now just so you know it's not perfect it's still slow because it's self-funded so you know uh, but then I just reach out to my personal network first and I think this is actually something people forget for business it's not too bad to reach out to everyone you know I just sent it out to my whole mailing list and since I'm already almost 40 I have a big one <laughs> and since I lived in many me too 
I know a lot of people. <laughs> so yeah, so I just told everyone and told them to tell everyone. And then it kind of spread a little bit from there, but also through social media, you know, and ask people to share and then try to find the content that people like. But you know, it's a journey, right. up and down. It is. Work, sometimes not. I'm also sometimes reaching out to women that are inspirational, for instance, on Forbes. I've seen some articles of women that I really love being connected with, and I just wrote a little article about them and told them about it and was like, do you want to be on my network? And they're like, yes, you know. Throughout that path, did you have any um, specific situation or experience that has touched you in, in a different way or what keeps you inspired every day? I mean, really honestly other people keep me inspired people who really want to make an impact and are authentic that they not don't try to be perfect i think this is such a thing among women but also in general like try to be authentic and you know even if things are not going so well it's fine too it's normal this is life you know um and when i hear people being that and really going for for something even if it's hard you know, this mentality of when everyone is trying to get everything really fast, it's, this does not create value. You have to go deep and you have to suffer a little bit. And this is what creates value. So that's what inspires me in other people. And in terms of experiences, I mean, obviously there have been a lot, you know. I guess one of the most, um, you know, emotional one in my life has been at 19 when my best girlfriend lost her mom and I went with her through all the pain and I mean at such an early age when you don't think about death or that life is going to end one day, I was kind of becoming aware that you know what, this is not forever. We don't know when we are going. So this helps me to this day even to just be like, you know what, I'm going to put myself out there. Who cares? Like, who cares? You know, the ones who need to hear the message are going to hear it and the ones who don't need to hear it are gonna not and that's fine you know and not to say that i was always super confident not at all you know it's a process but i i try to remind myself of that every day you know right confident like to be confident that these days with all the social media and as, <laughs> as you said like all the things that we put in our heads that we have to do or we have to meet these ends or we have to be perfect it's difficult but having the, the right people around you you know somebody you can just take one step back and remember what's important it's it's um it's a treasure really i am so happy to have met you i am going to give you a little space so you can say your message to the world and also share all of your social information your social media information Go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so whoever wants to connect with me, so happy to hear from you, especially if you're a young or older woman, no matter the background, no matter what you're doing in life, if you're interested in making an impact, definitely contact me. And uh, you can do that through Sisterhood Tribes. So the website is Sisterhood Tribes with an S in the end, dot com. We are also on Instagram and on Facebook. And of course, if you want to join the Not Self Made movement, feel free. It's on notselfmade.com. And if any one of you out there has a brand who needs a little bit of a more authentic communication around social impact, you can find us on plus305.com. Thank you so much for this space and time. Nadja, thank you. I am thrilled with the conversation. Uh, I hope you continue to do the amazing job that you have been doing. And until next time with me. Thank you so much for thank everything. Thank you, Nadja. Take care. Ciao. Bye-bye. <laughs> Every time I have the opportunity to listen to other women goals, experiences and challenges, I get inspired. We know the path is not easy, but we learn to joy from the sense of accomplishment on the way, the sense of making a change, and most importantly, the gratitude towards all the people that contribute on your cause. A forever thank you to all of those people, to the ones that showed up, and to the ones that will show up. There is still a lot to do. With that thought, we reach the end of the show. 
I will come back in a week with a new topic and a new friend. Nominate a person you love, you admire, or somebody you would like to support by writing me an email to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Let's get in touch and let the world know about them. Stay connected and until next time with me, goodbye!